Okay, here we are. Uh, sent out for a battery. The battery that was in it was a 200 CCA. A uh, little bit small, old, and it was giving us like 10 volts. So, uh, that wasn't good. Uh, I'm going to put the, uh, it's, I think it's 310 CCA battery we're going to put in it. I do like the way this one is set up. This is 2010. My other one's a 2008. Uh, there's a plate here you can take off and you can just pick the battery right up. No, no muss, no fuss. Where on the other one you basically, you know, it feels like you're starting by disassembling the bike and it's easier if you take the starter off but you can squeak by it. So that was good. Um, I'm a little concerned. Uh, like I said, that it was being stored and I'm sure the uh, person who was taking care of it just didn't realize this, but he was storing it in this position thinking that was cut off. And in actuality, that's prime. On a Ural, it's vacu uh, vacuum actuated through this hose, which is disconnected for a compression test. Um, in this position, it's on when there's a vacuum, off when there's not. In prime, it's always on. My concern is, besides a little bit of knocking we heard, uh, the oil reservoir was completely full of fuel. Uh, it, it was filled to the brim with fuel and had flooded the cylinders. Um, spark plugs don't look the best. Yeah, they're old. They're completely saturated in the smell of fuel and oil that got in here. I'm surprised we got it to crank um, after we pulled the oil level down. Um, my concern is is that at some point uh, it may have been started or attempted to be started and actually fired over with uh, a flooded crankcase and flooded cylinders. If that happened uh, this is not going to be pretty. Uh, it could have very possibly um, bent some stuff or cracked some stuff inside. One thing I haven't found yet is with this part plug in and tight, uh, when we crank the engine over, we can actually hear compression escaping um, from this side. So I don't know where that's escaping from. Hopefully, it's just something that's loose, a bolt that's loose. Maybe, you know, maybe we'll look up and if it's got to be something cracked, it's just a you know a crack here in the exhaust. It could be. Um, you know, worst case is there's a crack in the head somewhere that we can't find or don't see. Although I think we would see it with the oil that it would be blowing out. You know, maybe it's just a really badly corroded spark plug and it's coming out around it. We'll see. It seemed pretty tight. So we got to get in there and check that. The first thing I want to do is get a battery in it so I can turn this thing over. And, uh, do a, do a proper compression check. I did a compression check with the kickstart, which is about impossible. Both of them came up to just under 100 PSI. So it seems like there's compression. Doesn't mean nothing's bent. It just means that the rings are still good in the cylinders. And, uh, you know, don't know. This is a continuing story. You know, suspected there could be some issues, but uh, yeah, that's, that's part of the game. I mean, we, we bought this as a project bike. Uh, we didn't expect it to be in pristine condition. And, uh, you know, what we find is what we find. I was thinking the clutch might be bad in it, but I really can't tell. Doing a little bit of research. Uh, it could just be that the clutch arm is just bent. It's the old style clutch arm that goes up past. Let's see if I can get in here and show you this. It goes up past the speedometer cable. And when you try to clutch, so even in, in the full back relaxed position, it is very close to the speedometer cable. And when you go to, to use the clutch, it's actually bending over the speedometer cable now. That's not good. Um, but there's a replacement that they sell for this that'll actually bring it in behind it. Uh, to make sure it's out of the way. And again, if this is bent, it could just be I thought it was a bad clutch because I can't fully clutch because I'm hitting the speedometer cable. That's what I'm hoping. I, I 
35,000 miles, I would not think it had totally destroyed the clutch in that short of time. Uh, we'll see. The other thing I noticed, and this, this gives me concern to see the kickstart used this much, uh, but also to see it bent like this uh, means that it took a tremendous amount of pressure at some point. And uh, not sure, you know, maybe you just got stranded, maybe you preferred to use the kickstart and he was just a heavy guy. Um, but maybe someone tried to kickstart it while the crankcase was full of fuel. Don't know. Uh, transmission, I can't really tell that much about. It worked when I took it out. I uh, went to first and second gear. It uh, a little sloppy on the shifts, but eh, not, not bad. I was having more trouble with the clutch than I was the shifting. I was having to push past moving gears because I couldn't fully clutch, and that's what got me to thinking the clutch might be bad. But I'm going to order, you know, those Pauls I don't think better like $30 or $40, so I'll get that. I'm going to resist doing any upgrades um, or major, you know, changes or cosmetics or anything like that until I have sorted it out mechanically. You know, it's not going to make sense to go through the effort of putting a lot in this if I find out the engine has to be rebuilt or, you know, push rods. Uh, may just be push rods, you know, they may be bent or it may be loose tie, I, I don't know. I just know when it was running, uh, it had a little bit of a knock on the right side that made me a little uncomfortable. Um, you know, otherwise the bike, I mean, it looks really, really good. Uh, I actually did get in touch with the previous owner. <laughs> um, learned a few things. The fuel in it uh, is very old, so no surprise there. It's, it is bad fuel. We're going to have to drain that. And, get it going that's why it was running so rough and smelling so bad and uh, you know hopefully I can, hopefully you know I got no ill will we got a good deal on the bike I had no problem with that we got what we paid for uh, even if there is an engine problem we got what we paid for so that I'm not worried about and if he's watching this video um, you know I no no hard feelings nothing I mean this this is what I expected, uh, I'd hoped that uh, you know we wouldn't find any major mechanical problems. I still don't know that we have. So, but uh, yeah, I, I knew what I was getting into. So that that's you know again no no ill will there. Sometimes it's a little awkward when the previous owner's watching. But uh, you know it, it's a project bike. It's an adventure. Something for my son to learn on too. So we'll uh, we'll keep going here get us a new battery in it and uh, get a compression chest uh, ch compression test uh, endoscopy into it uh, maybe look in and see how how it looks inside and kind of go from there but uh, stay tuned